Linguistic studies indicate that the total number of languages spoken around the globe is estimated between 3,000 and 8,000. It's difficult to give a more accurate number since linguists sometimes disagree on what are distinct languages and what dialects of the same language are. The Ethnologue Catalogue of World Languages currently lists nearly 7,000 languages. About 6% of them have more than a million speakers each and collectively account for 94% of the world population. On the other hand, about half of the languages are spoken by fewer than 10,000 people, and about a quarter of them have less than 1,000 speakers. Some countries have several communities speaking diverse languages despite having a national or official language. A society with diverse languages exposed to a variety of culture and traditions. The Horn of Africa's nation, Ethiopia, is one of the countries with the highest linguistic diversity. Over 80 languages are spoken among its more than 100 million people. The country is home for diverse ethnicities, languages, and culture. Out of 80 languages in the country, 70% of them have their home in the state of southern nations, nationalities, and peoples. The southern state is rich with language and cultural diversity. The diversity can be explained in terms of identity, culture, and history. It's also a region where a number of religions exist. Most language families common in Ethiopia, such as the Nilo Saharan, Semitic, Cushitic, and Omotic are widely spoken in the region. In the previous regions, language diversity used to be considered as a threat for unity and development. It's now been 27 years since it has taken a different scene. As part of the nation and nationalities in the state, we were oppressed and deprived of our rights. We were prohibited from exercising our own religion and faith. There was tremendous challenge in the previous times, especially in terms of using one's own language in the region. People were ashamed of freely using their native language. As enshrined in the Constitution, everyone has unconditional right to speak, write, and develop one's own language, to express, develop, and promote their culture, and to preserve history. The Constitution has rendered all citizens inalienable right to use, develop, and promote their own language. In this connection, the nations and nationalities of the southern state have the same right to fully express and promote their cultures and language. A conducive environment is created for everyone to fully exercise their right. So far, 31 languages in the southern state of Ethiopia are lined up in the educational system of the country. These languages have now got the opportunity to be learning languages at school. Halaba languages now being taught at school, which wasn't the case before. As articulated in the Constitution, all languages were able to be taught at schools. 
All are involved in the writing system and are made to be streamlined in the educational system of the country. Now, students are learning in their native language, and when they are taught in their native language, they would be able to comprehend their environment easily. The cultural and language development works being underway provide an opportunity for citizens to explore and know more about their identity. The nations and nationalities of the southern state are benefiting from the rights guaranteed by the Constitution, as many claim. All parts of the society in Walaita are interested in listening to the programs we transmit in the language. Our audiences understand the presentations without any difficulty. What's more, when radio programs are presented in people's native language, everyone would be encouraged to develop and promote its language. Languages in the southern state are also being used in the film industry. These opportunities would help the languages to thrive and expand. The diverse language and culture of the state are witnessing a promising start in this regard. There are music clips we are preparing in the Hammer area, which fully describe the culture and living condition of the area. There are also many music videos we prepared in Sidama, Walaita and other languages of the state. In addition, we were able to produce various films in the native languages of the area. For instance, we've made efforts to make a film entitled Brute that portray the whole culture and conflict resolution ways in the region. We also participate in giving trainings for the youth in film making. In addition to allowing languages to be taught at schools and exerting efforts to promote the languages in the state of the southern states, nations, nationalities and people, modern dictionaries are being prepared which would have a considerable role in accelerating the development of the languages. For instance, a dictionary has been made available in the language of Walaita. It is a dictionary that translates Walaita into English. On the first hand, the native speakers of Walaita would be able to find the equivalence in English. They could read and write in English. It will have tremendous benefits for the society. Higher educational institutions are also contributing their share by conducting researches for the better improvement and development of the languages. A common platform has been created with the higher educational institutions. The platform helps to work with pertinent culture and tourism institutions and conduct research on languages that are notably prone to extinction. We are identifying those languages in collaboration with the universities so as to document and bring them to recovery. In instructors in the university pay attention to three prominent things. They primarily take part in teaching activities. In addition to that, they conduct researches and they involve in community service. Instructors in the language stream participate in undertaking researches on language and culture. As part of the main project in the university, we are carrying out culture and linguistic studies. <laughs> In addition to being used in primary and secondary schools, our languages are also being given in universities. For instance, Sidama language is one of the languages being taught and studied in Hawassa University. Numerous activities are being done to accelerate the development of language. 
We should be able to use this opportunity to enable culture and language growth. Sidama language is being given in the university, which showcases the progress made in the state. There are many students joining Sidama language and literature department. They will be graduating as professionals in the language. They are not being ashamed of their language and culture as in the previous times. They are rather celebrating the opportunity they gained through the system. Prime attention is given to the vernacular languages of the state, especially to those which are susceptible to danger due to the small number of speakers. Producing dictionaries is one such move to prevent the languages from vanishing. We have managed to produce dictionaries of about 20 ethnic languages. Dictionaries in the Russian language, Ali, Tsamai, and Badna are some of them. We conduct research on these languages in collaboration with universities. We are also working to prepare dictionaries that depict culture. We are making studies mainly focusing on endangered languages. We do research on their overall characteristics. We are identifying the language that should be studied. However, this research is not sufficient at all. More studies should be done. Therefore, all pertinent stakeholders in the university are taking part in conducting other viable researches. Spectacular achievements have been recorded in language promotion works, which notably play an important role in the recognition of a society in all platforms. <laughs> The development stage of the languages is so encouraging. Languages that have been given the opportunity on radio transmissions would be able to grow rapidly. The languages are also being taught at schools and universities, which is practically an awesome development. The southern state, which is significantly known for being a habitat for a plethora of languages and cultures, is showing outstanding progress in cultural and linguistic studies. Though researches conducted on the endangered languages are not yet sufficient, encouraging outcomes are emerging. An intensified approach to the study and promotion of the languages and culture of the society are expected to be carried out by the state and other pertinent stakeholders for the state to benefit from its unmatched wells of harmonious diversity. In the 17th and 18th century, the European superpowers colonized the rest of the world, including Africa, to exploit their natural resources and other wealth. Europeans mainly turned their face to Africa in the late 19th century, a period better described as the scramble for Africa. As part of this move, the newly unified Italy at that time had tried to colonize Ethiopia. 
Italy cannot understand why the League of Nations that's taken no steps in the Chinese-Japanese question, that has not interfered in the Chaco troubles, is today so strong against this Italian campaign in Abyssinia. But Ethiopia successfully defeated Italy at the Battle of Adwa on the 2nd of March 1896 near to the town of Adwa. This remarkable victory maintained the sovereignty of Ethiopia and changed the course of world history. When the Europeans agree to divide African nations among themselves and go for it, Ethiopia achieved a huge victory that meticulously contradicted their ambition. So the victory of Adwa is the symbol of freedom for African countries and black people around the world, especially those in Jamaica and the United States. They are proud of it. Although it is a victory that had been achieved by the joint efforts of the Ethiopian people, the victory of Adwa is the pride of all black people oppressed by colonization and slavery. It gives them the hope that they will be free at some point. That's why many historians proudly talk about the victory of Adwa. They see it as their own history and heritage. This usually is demonstrated whenever our prime minister or other government officials visit different countries. Africa we are natural. Europe we are not really other regions. But Adwa like. There were Africans that defeated Europeans at Adwa. So the victory of Adwa was the first triumph in reversing the European plan and decision of scrambling Africa in 1884 and 85, which aimed at colonizing all African nations. After that victory, all Africans developed a very strong positive spirit. It has motivated them significantly and contributed a lot for the independence of many African countries. Many historians stated that the victory of Adwa has contributed a great deal for the new Ethiopia's nation-building project. <laughs> If the victory of Adwa didn't happen at all, probably the current Ethiopia would have another history or shape. The triumph was not only about defeating the external invading force, it was also about establishing modern government by ourselves in Africa. The Ethiopian people learned that they can overcome any challenge by working together, and after they have built modern Ethiopia. <laughs> Different nations, nationalities and peoples of Ethiopia come together voluntarily, designed war plan and equipped themselves with various traditional weapons following Emperor Menelik's call to defend the nation. As part of their preparation, they have even done spy workers. They had jointly fought the enemy with great understanding. That is how they achieved the victory. It was one of the manifestations of the national unity. We can say that the new Ethiopia was built at that time. Its significance was also very high as various nations and nationalities and peoples have contributed a lot for the success. As a result, they managed to sustain the independence of Ethiopia. They made all Ethiopians proud and free to live in free country which they have inherited from their forefathers. So it has huge values in it. The victory has also created very strong spirit of national unity which is part of the wider nation-building project. It is a proven part of history. We've built a national pride, national unity, and our own government. We've also built a renowned country that has good image. If we continue working on such foundations, 
I believe this part of our history will help us build a strong generation. When we see it at continental level, the Europeans came to divide Africa among themselves. So when we achieve the victory at one part of the continent, a victory belonged to all black people around the world. Under the colonial rule, Africans and black people around the world suffered a lot from race discrimination and human rights abuse. To stop such harsh treatment of human beings and strengthen bonds of solidarity between the people of African descent, the Pan-African movement began. The movement is based on the belief that unity is vital to economic, social and political progress. Pan-Africanism at its core is a belief that African people in the continent and in the diaspora share not a merely common history but a common destiny. The victory of Adwa further strengthened this movement by uplifting the spirit of Africans and black people around the world. It also served as a model for the anti-colonial movement and finally all African countries gained their independence. Many were freed without bloodshed. 1960 was hailed the Year of Africa. Freedom. Ghana, your beloved country is free forever. We are going to demonstrate to the world, to the other nations, young as we are, that we are prepared to lay our own foundation. In addition to intensifying their struggle to independence, the victory of Adwa helped African countries establish the organization of the African unity, one of the illustrations of their unity. Yadwala Yetadaragodil, Kapan African and Kasekasi, Bohala de Mu Pan African and Kasekasi, and Wada Takwaminat and Kayero Yadaragano. The victory of Adoa has created the Pan African movement. Later on, it has become a reason for the establishment of the organization of Africa Unity, currently the Africa Union. The victory of Adoa is also one of the reasons why Addis Ababa became the seat of the Africa Union. Ethiopia has been always seen as the symbol of freedom and resistance by black people in Africa, America, the Caribbean, and other parts of the world. Ethiopia is seen from this perspective. The victory of Adwa is more than a simple battle account. It was a symbol of resistance for Africans and African Americans in the bad days. It has also sealed the unity of Ethiopia. To commemorate this remarkable victory, the Ethiopian government has decided to establish the Adwa Pan-African University in the town of Adwa. Preliminary works of building the Adwa Pan-African University were started in May 2008. A foundation stone was laid in April 2017 by Prime Minister Hayre Mariam de Sali. Several works have been undertaken since then. The progress is a bit slow. Understanding its significance, different segments of society are working tirelessly for the realization of the university. The university, which is to be built in the historic town of Adwa, 
will play a magnificent role in conducting thorough researches on the history of Ethiopia and all black people around the world. Producing efficient scholars that could solve critical problems on the continent, strengthening people-to-people -people relations, and preserving common values of African people are some of the major objectives of the university. When we establish this university at the Adawa Pan Africa University, there will be an opportunity in which the history of Adawa could be written in books and journals and be told forever. Adawa is not only the victory of Ethiopia, it is also the victory of Africans and all black people. So this university should be an important platform in which all Africans could freely work for a better future in peace and development. The idea of establishing the Adawa Pan Africa University came from Ethiopians. This showed the level of our commitment for the realization of the Pan-African movement relating it to the victory of Adawa. Some time ago, when the coordinating committee met our Prime Minister, he told us that whenever he goes from Jamaica to South Africa, People speak about Adwa and they are proud of it. So there is a need to commemorate such a significant victory by building a strong institution. This will in turn play a significant role in boosting a positive spirit in the next generation. The reason why Adwa town is chosen is because it is the place where the war had taken place. It is the right place to meet the set objectives. The other thing is, during the 50 years anniversary of OAUAU, African leaders have envisioned what the continent has to look like 50 years down the road. They planned to further integrate the continent. Accordingly, students from all African countries will go to the university upon its completion. Ethiopia cannot enroll its students more than the offered quota. Knowing and understanding each other in the upcoming university, African students would enhance the envisioned integration of the continent. Youngsters from our country and other African nations should prepare and organize themselves to ensure the development and renaissance of their continent. So the upcoming university will play an important role in solving the current problems of the continent and set the right direction to prosperity. Africa has been suffering from a number of ideologies and theories, such as socialism, neoliberalism, and others which were originated and grown in other parts of the world. We hope that this university will come up with at least an initial idea, if not a complete one, to enable the use of the continent and solve the existing problems. It's a multi-purpose. This is a multi-purpose university. It merely serves two things. When we say it at national level, it will strengthen nationalism, which is an important element of nation building. And if we see it from a continental perspective, it will help to properly utilize resources and solve major problems of Africa. What are those problems? They are economic challenges, backwardness, disease and lack of peace. It has to play a crucial role in solving these problems. The other thing is, it has to contribute to its part to develop the existing resources. With good history, we are the origin of humankind. We've also a colorful culture. So it has to be a center where all these values should be reserved, developed, and displayed to the people of the world. When it goes operational, the Adwa Pan African University is expected to bring significant diplomatic importance to Ethiopia. Its diplomatic implication is very high. If this is a center for all black people, diplomatically it means 
all are diplomas for Ethiopia. If any problem is to happen, for example, a security threat, no one will be willing to accept that, as Ethiopia is a center for all Africans. So it is an advantage for our country and the entire Africa to bring consensus and share the resources we own. The initial design of the university master plan was prepared by the Ethiopian Institute of Architecture Building and City Construction. It was designed in a way that could represent the struggles of the Ethiopian nations, nationalities and peoples and the spirit of the Pan-African movement. The Pan-Africanism first month it has to reflect the spirit of the Pan-Africa movement. The chosen place for the construction of the university is the town of Adur. Specifically, it is located in the southeastern part of the town. The topography itself is very unique, featuring mountains and gorges. One can see the town and the battlefield of Adur, where our forefathers defeated the external invading force from a distance. So the university design was done considering the topography of the site and its historical significance. Moreover, the building architecture itself was designed to express the history and future struggle of Africans and black people, taking into account their cultural values. As it is known, Ethiopia has many nations, nationalities and peoples. They have different house building, clothing and way of life. But here in this design, we have incorporated their joint effort in defeating foreign enemy, protecting their country, putting their differences aside. So it has to reflect all these things, putting unity in diversity. Not only Ethiopia, it has also considered house building style of other African countries, imitating their architectural and villagization styles. The Ethiopian government has been supporting the construction of the university since its commencement. Even recently, it has allocated 200 million bir, which will be used for this Ethiopian budget year. The project requires the contribution of all citizens. Yes, project. It was an project, the project is not only for that of Adwa Tigray. Ethiopia or some other parts of the world, East Africa. It is a project of all black and oppressed people around the globe. The point is we have to develop the historic place that we have ignored for the last 122 years. If we keep on ignoring, there are a lot of things that could be forgotten. At that time, people may even ask what the story was. So as a people and as a country, we have to do something without taking much more time. So I call upon each and every citizen, the youth, the elderly, men and women, mothers and fathers, all to contribute their part for the realization of this project. The upcoming Adwa Pan-African University will be an important institution that celebrates not only the victory of Ethiopia over Italy, but also the defeat of colonization, slavery and oppression. Adwa deserves many more institutions of that kind in remembrance of a historic incident in black history. Adwa <laughs>